Hey, what's happening, YouTube? Mac the Duel is coming at you once again from the TCG Enterprise, where we talk about all your favorite card games. You guys, we have done it. I have done it. We finally have zombie support in Dimension Force, and here is the next deck profile for you. We're going to go ahead and get on into it, you guys. You guys are going to hopefully like this one, and if you don't, well, let me know how I can improve it. Let's start it off, you guys, and we are going to be going with two Shurenyu Solitaire. Yes, I am running this card. A lot of times people say not to run it. It is substantial that you run this in the deck. I know a lot of meta players are not running this card. If you could find a way to not use it, okay, fine. But honestly, this is the way to go. It is. A lot of people don't seem to agree, and that's okay. You're based off your own opinion. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't agree. That's what makes us human. But honestly, this card is a major staple for this deck. No more than two. Why? It's too cloggy. Two is suffice. Less than two? Not good. Not good. This one you tribute and go ahead and get out for your tuner. Your main tuner guy would be, of course, for Uni Zombie. And I'm running three Uni Zombies. Not two, not one, but definitely three. And the reason for the three is because, as I said, you have the perfect ratio with the two Solitaires and with the three Uni Zombie. The reason why I'm saying this is, is because these guys combo off from each other. You guys can get into your link place with this. Uni Zombie will go ahead and increase up from the level so you can go ahead and Synchro Summon. And you can do other kind of weird, fantastic, amazing stuff. So definitely run in for your three there. Another three that I run as far as zombies go because we need to have revival is Mizuki. Yes, I am running three Mizuki. For some weird reason, a lot of meta players are running two. It's it's understandable, but three is just as good to get the extra hand to special summon with. Some are running one, which I have no idea why they are doing that. But three is good. Three is good. Two is okay, but it's better off at, at a three of. Especially since it's a level four. You can go into major exceed plays by doing that. We're not going to, but nonetheless, it's still good to have in any case. One Gozuki, because it does the same thing as Mazuki. The only fact for this, though, is that you send one zombie from the deck to the graveyard, and then if this is in the graveyard, you can banish another zombie, then special summon one zombie from your hand. This one does it from the uh, graveyard. This one does it from the uh, hand. So, but it's still good to have. Nonetheless, some people run two Kazuki. Ah, it's just good to have the one. Just the one. One is suffice. Next, we have two Doom King Balrog. I'm saying two because you need to have two. Anybody who is running less than one of these guys should be automatically ashamed of themselves and should honestly stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh! altogether. Okay, well, maybe I'm being a little bit extreme. But honestly, though, I can honestly say for this fact, yes, you need to only be running two, not three. It's way too cloggy for three. One, if you could combo it off right away, okay, maybe one, but still, what are you going to do if it's gone? Nothing. You won't be able to have much resources in regards towards that if it ends up getting left from the game and it gets straighted out of the game or your opponent takes it, well, then now you don't have an option. You need to be able to have another one for a backup so that you can set up for more combo plays. Speaking of combo plays, we have two Necroroyal Benchy. Some are running three. Like I said, it's too cloggy. You need to even out the ratios for as many zombie worlds as you're going to end up having into this deck. Speaking of which, this brings out your zombie world that you're going to end up needing. And I'll go into that in a minute. But we need to have two Necro World Banshee. It works. Let it work. Let the, let, the, let the deck function. Let the deck do what it's meant to do. Two Glow Up Bloom. Some run one. Eh. I figure two is pretty suffice. 
If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and add a level five or higher from the deck to your hand. We run two glow of bloom. So then that way we are able to get our Doom King Bottle Rock. We need to be able to have our resources cycling each other out so then that way we do not run out of resources. And a zombie deck can definitely run out of resources if you do not have them available to grasp. Especially for some people, for some reason, who are uh, mixing up three, four, five decks together for some godforsaken reason, I don't know why, but nonetheless, it's good to fix up for your ratios. Speaking of which, we're going to be having one Jack of Bolin. I'll just keep it right here in the middle so you guys can see. One Jack of Bolin. Uh, by discarding one zombie monster, you special summon this card from the hand. It's always good to have that. Plus, you could level it up, level it down with an Uni Zombie. Also, you could do a quick effect during your opponent's main phase. Target one zombie monster in either graveyard, special summon the target, then banish it when it leaves the field. This is perfect when you want to go ahead and set up for link plays or synchro plays. That way you could do that because why? Because we have zombie world and zombie world will do what? In just a second. So we're going to be having this new one here that just came out of Dimension Force. Mad Mauler, this angry zombie clown. It is a tuner. Yeah, it is a tuner. This card's name becomes Plague Spreader while on the field or in the graveyard. If this card is in your graveyard, target one level six or higher monster you control. Reduce the level by, by two. If you do, special summon this card. Also, the player who special summoned it cannot special summon monsters except for zombies. While this card is face up on the monster zone, you can only use the effects of the Mad Mauler once per turn. The next card that we run is pretty cool. And this one is, car, is called Al Ghul. Mazera. If a zombie monster you control will be destroyed by battle or a card effect, you can banish this card from your hand or graveyard instead. If this card is banished from the hand or the graveyard, you can special summon this card in defense position. Then you can reduce its level by one. You can only use each effect of Algol Mazera once per turn. You need to have two of this guy. Some people just run the one. Some people are not even running this card, and I have no idea why. You should be running this card. You should be running this card. Another card you should be running is Plague Spreader. Yeah, Plague Spreader Zombie is always good to have. You can banish it, it can come back, and it's perfect. It is perfect. You need to have this card. It's a zombie for crying out loud. Another zombie for crying out loud is also this new one here, Chanchi, the Sparado. Uh, the or Spiradio, as they would say it. Uh, during your main phase, you can send one zombie monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard. If this card is banished, you can banish one zombie from your graveyard and special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. This is actually really good. Oh, and it's also a once per turn, by the way. This card is very good. Why? Because it can be replenished and you could use it over and over again. Assuming that you'll be able to bring it out again, but it's still good to have nonetheless. You only need the one copy though, by the way. You don't need more than one. That's it. Then we're going to be going with three Ash Blossom. Yes, Ash Blossom. It is a zombie. It is a tuner. It is substantial to have in this deck. If you are not running Ash Blossom in this deck, go get your copies right now. Put them in your deck and be happy with it. If you're not happy with it, then give it to somebody else who will deserve it. Three Ash Blossoms. You need to be running three Ash Blossoms. So that's it for the monsters. Next card that we end up running here, of course, is our Zombie World. And I'm running three Zombie World. Some people are running two. If you can find a way to go to do the two, great, but you're really cutting down your standards of this deck. Three is suffice. One goes, you got another one for backup. Both are gone, you have a third. That's the reason why you have it. Turns everything into zombies, both in the field and in the graveyard, including your opponents, so then that way you can utilize that to your advantage. Another one, terraforming, free real estate. 
you get another uh, zombie world out right away or even out for your hand so if something pops out for one you have another one ready to go one foolish burial so that we could dump get it out right away one change of heart yeah this came off from the ban list let's see how well it goes target one monster under the field that your opponent controls take control of it regardless of the position mind you one monster reborn it's always good to have another another revival card one Harpy's Feather Duster. It's Harpy's Feather Duster. We don't know, we need to go into what it does. But yes, it does. It destroys all spells and traps that your opponent controls. Then we have three Super Poly. A lot of people are questioning this card. Do not question this card. Let it work. Let the deck do what it's supposed to do. Let it function. Stop trying to twist the deck around and making it do something that it's not used to. It's not going to work. And if any of it, if it does work, you're probably more or less likely to throw the deck out because it's not fun for you anymore. But anyways, we are running Super Poly Package. That's it. I don't need to go into details what this card does. Everybody knows what this card does. Another card is Zombie Reborn. Yeah. Yeah, you're hearing it right. Target one zombie in either player's graveyard and banish one monster with the same name from the deck or extra deck. And if you do, special summon the target monster to your field. If this card is in your graveyard, you could shuffle one of the banished zombie monsters onto the deck. And if you do, set this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use it once per turn and only once during that turn. You need to run the two so that you can have one to set. That's the only reason why you're running a second one. That's the only reason why. As far as anything else goes here, we're going to be going into our traps, and the traps are always fun to have. But as far as traps go, we're only going to be running three traps. Rivalry of the Warlords. That's all we run. Each player can only control one type of monster. Send all the rest to the graveyard. That's it. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. Some people can run uh, Impermanence. I don't really recommend it. The only reason why I say that is, is just because of the fact that, do you really need Impermanence? Not exactly. There's other decks that can function without Impermanence, trust me. But as far as our extra deck goes, we will need one Zombie Vampire. Yes, we have extras. I still have the other one in my Vampire deck. But uh, yeah, one Zombie Vampire. It's good for two level eights, and you basically, if the monster is with a level that is owned by your opponent, for the XYZ summon of this card, treat it as a level eight. Neither player can target the card with this effect uh, with special summon monsters, except for those that are special summoned from the graveyard. Detach one material from this card. Each player will send the top four cards from the deck to the graveyard, and if any monsters that were sent to the graveyard by this effect, special summon one of those and put them onto the field. Then we have two Nether Soul Dragon. Some are running one of this guy, and I honestly don't agree with that. You need to be running two. You need to be running two. Two zombie monsters must first be special summon uh, with fusion summon. Cannot be destroyed by battle uh, with this uh, card until the end of the damage step if this card battle on a monster that has the original level the monster's attack becomes zero then it allows you to go ahead and get off for a dark soul token we don't have a dark soul token just yet but we will in any case two of this guy is good to go we have one elder entity in the test i don't need to go into the details what this does you guys already know what this thing does as well one mud dragon of the swamp you already know what this does one Starving Venom, you already know what this does. This is your uh, your Fusion Summon uh, package. So, new cards here that we have is this one, this one, and this one. Let's start off with our left here. This is Red Eyes Zombie Dragon Lord. One zombie tuner, one non-tuner uh, non monsters. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you could target one monster... A zombie monster in your graveyard except for the dragon lord special summon it 
if this card is in your graveyard, banish one zombie that you control, special summon this card. You can only use it once per turn. Next one is Skeletal Dragon Felgran. Yeah, you're hearing it right. Fel Felgran. That's an old deck. But in any case, if this card is special summoned, then you could target one monster your opponent controls or into the graveyard and banish it. The monster is special summoned from either pl uh, graveyard. This monster is on the uh, while this monster is on the field, you could target one other face up monster onto the field and engage its effects until the end of this turn. You can only use it once per turn. And finally, Immortal Dragon. During your main phase, you could target or send one zombie monster from the deck to your graveyard. And if you do, this card's level becomes the difference of the original levels of that monster and this card. When your uh, zombie monster is destroyed by battle, while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use it once per turn. On towards our links. What well, Chris, you're on Hockey Fibrex, aka Needle Fiber. I don't need to go into details what this does. Everybody knows what this card does. One X is a code talker. Everybody knows what this card does. I don't need to go into details as to what it does. One Appalooza, same thing. Everybody know what it does. Don't need to explain it. One Evan Dread Savior. I've already explained this in the last video. I'm not gonna explain it again. One Vampire Sucker and another Vampire Sucker. You already know what these cards do. If you don't know what these do, go ahead and check out on other zombie videos. I have a whole bunch of them right there. You guys can go ahead and check out their effects or just read off the effects right off the video right now. You guys can see the text. So that's it for the deck, you guys. That is it for the deck. I might end up doing a branded Eldritch deck. I think that that would be pretty fun to kind of do uh, something like that. But feel free to go ahead and comment down below, you guys, on what you guys want to see next. As far as duels, tutorials, or any other kind of fun videos, you guys. And I'll definitely keep those up and running. And I'll see you guys all until the next time. Happy gaming.